Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at 5 power tips for all you Slider Revolution 5 users out there. So load up your copy of Slider Revolution and follow along with these 5 great power tips. So to kick things off, we're going to take a look at something that's just been added to the latest version of Slider Revolution 5, and specifically when you're working with videos. So if you have the latest version, which is 5.31, you're going to see this option available to you. If you don't, then I recommend updating, making sure you've got the latest version. So here's a video slide that I created previously, and I'm just going to go in and take a look at that, and we're going to have a look at that new option. Now normally when you create a video slider and you link in your uh, YouTube, video, you've got the option to upload a picture from your media library or choose anything from the object library. But you'll see now we have a third option, which is the YouTube video poster. So at the moment, I'm using an image that I've pulled in myself. And as you can see, it's of the tiger. So let's say I don't have the time or the inclination to create this slide for myself. Then what I can do is I can use the YouTube video poster and we can now load in the default thumbnail that's associated with the video that's going to play. So you see if I scroll down where we've got the tiger at the moment, once I activate the option for YouTube video poster, it's going to change that automatically to the file that's been loaded for the thumbnail for that video on YouTube. And you can see that's exactly what's happened now. So a great way of being able to make sure that you've got something that's a great call to action for the video that will link up to what's on YouTube, and especially if you don't want to use one of your own. So there's your first power tip. Let's take a look at the second one. Now, if you're working with dynamic sliders, in other words, you're creating content from posts or pages on your site, the ability to use meta tags is a great way of making sure that you can pull in the live data. Now, I've covered this in a lot more detail, but I just want to show you quickly how you can pull in a lot of different meta tags to link up with the content that's part of your pages or your posts on your site. So let's just quickly create a new slider. We're going to set this to be post based. I can sub filter this down if I wanted to. So I've got a whole lot of control. I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm going to give this one a title and we're just going to call this dynamic. And we'll give it an alias of the same. So we're going to come down and we'll say that this is going to be, it doesn't really matter, a st standard slider and we'll set it to be full width and we'll set the height to be 500. Okay, so we've set up the basics of our slider. Let's just hit save on that. Let's move over now where we can create the slider itself. So if I want to create dynamic content and I want to pull this information in, it has to be a post or a uh, page based slider. It has to have information being pulled from your WordPress website. So if we now come down and we want to come down and create uh, buttons and different things like that and images and links and things, we've got a couple of different options available to us. We can use featured image to create the background image. As you can see, it's an option at the top. So we can use that to pull in the image we want from any slider. And you can see it just pulls a placeholder in there. But now we can create dynamic content. So if I just come down to add layer and we'll say let's add some text, you can see I can add text in there in a normal fashion. But what I could also do is I can use the new button, which is the filter button. Now, this is only available for dynamic based slides. So you can't have this on there if you're creating a static slider or a hero slider. And you're not pulling this information from one of your posts or pages. So once we click on that, you can see we now have a range of different options with a pile of short codes. So all of these meta tags on the left hand side will pull in information from our post or page. And you can see on the right hand side, it tells us exactly what each one of these is for. We can do the same if you've got WooCommerce installed, so you can quickly and easily create WooCommerce based sliders. And you can also come through and choose images and you can see we've got a whole range of different options available to us in there. Now all we need to do is just click on that meta tag and that will automatically populate that information. So we can just hit title, for example, that'll drop title in there and that will now be replaced with the title that's part of the post. So if I just confirm that, I can now go and style that in any way that I want, and I can quickly and easily build up dynamic base sliders with a whole range of dynamic content using the simple meta tags. So that's how easy it is to pull in a huge range of information from your posts and pages. Now, did you know that on every slide that you create with Slider Revolution 5, you can control the different elements visibility across all the different devices? So what I've done at the moment is I've got a simple slide set up with three different objects. We've got a shape, we've got a graphic, and we've got a button. And all I need to do to control exactly what they can be seen on is simply select the object, come down to the section where we've got all these different tabs available to us, and come down and choose visibility. 
Once I do that, you can see all the devices that are available to me, and I can just choose what they are available on. So if I went on the desktop and laptop, but not on mobile devices and tablets, I can simply turn those off. So by using these options to control the visibility across those different devices, we can quickly and easily build up intelligent slides that work with the different devices and hide elements that we don't think are basically going to be beneficial to users on bigger or smaller screens. So again, another one of those little tips that are really invaluable once you start to build up cross-platform kind of sliders where you want that granular level of control. Okay, so I'm back working with a YouTube-based video slider again. And if you want to know how to create these, I've got a tutorial that will take you through the entire process, and I'll put the link in the description below so you can check that out. But let's just say that you wanted to have some control over the video that you embed into your slider. Well, you can do a lot of different things. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how we can quickly create interactive button elements that allow us to mute the video, pause it, and play it. So we get a lot of control over exactly what happens with the video. So, I've got my video set up, everything is in place, now what I want to do is put in those transport control buttons and the mute button. So we're going to do that quite simply by coming down and we're just going to simply come down and we're going to choose button. Now I can choose any of the normal buttons and I can configure those and style those the way I want, but if I scroll down you'll see we've got some predefined elements. And this is a quick way of being able to put those play and pause buttons and things in there. So for this video we're going to use some of the predefined buttons. We'll use this one to toggle the audio and we'll use the other transport controls for the pause and the play. So let's just insert the first one. We click and that puts that into place. We'll just roughly position that where we want it. I'm not going to be too picky about this. The next one can then add another layer again, so we're just going to come in and choose a button again. I'm going to come down and we'll choose the pause option, so we'll have that one. And finally, we'll do the same again, connect the button, and we'll choose the play button. So there's our basic transport controls. So now what we need to do is assign the actions to those. So to start off with, let's click on the first one to toggle the audio. And if I come up to the top, you can see we've got the option for actions. So with that object selected, I can click and I can add my first option in there. So let's go and click. So we say on click, do something. So we're going to tell it to toggle the audio. So let's just say we've got toggle mute media or toggle mute all media, or we've got unmute media, unmute media. So we've got a couple of options there. So for this one, we're going to just choose toggle mute media. Click on that, and that asks us, okay, when you click it, you're going to toggle to mute the media, and then we've got the target option. In other words, what are we going to target with this? What do we want to make mute or play? So we can click, and you can see you've got video and active slider or background video. Because we've got an embedded video, we're going to choose the background video option, and we can set the delay on there if we wanted to to specify after we click it how long it'll wait before it does the action to mute or unmute. So this is the first one. Let's go to the pause option now. Click on that. Do the same again. Click choose click. We're going to set this now to do the pause. So what we're going to do is come down to stop media. There we go. Again, choose background video. We don't want any delay on there. And finally, we do the same thing for the play. Click, on click, do something. And that's going to be start media. And background video again. So that's the right video. So we're all good to go. So once we save that, we'll test that out and take a look at what it does. So let's just save it. And then we go and test that out on a test page. So let's just hit the play on there, and we load that, and there's our slider, there's our audio. As you can see, we can mute it, we can pause it, we can hit play, and we can unmute it. So that's how easy it is to create customized transport controls with a simple level of interactivity with your video sliders. Really cool. Okay, for this final tip, I want to take you through and show you quite a cool new feature, which is the scroll effects feature. So I've created a simple slider. You can see I've got my background image on there. I can create this in a normal fashion. I can add extra elements in there if I want to, quite quick and easy, usual things. But what I'm going to do is with that saved, I'm going to come back over to my slider settings, and we're going to take a look on the right-hand side, and you'll see you've got a new option called scroll effects. If I click on there, that opens up a new panel that gives us a load of new controls for the way that the slider is viewed when it's out of the viewport. In other words, as we scroll this up or we scroll into the area, what will happen to the slider? 
So you can see we've got a couple of options available. We've got fade effect, blur effect, and grayscale effect. We can enable any or all of those. So I'm going to just choose the fade effect, and I'm going to choose the grayscale, so it'll fade out, and it'll become black and white. If we choose the blur, you can see we've got the option of how much blur is applied. And we say, well, what elements are going to be affected? So for this one, we say on slider background, none, parallax layers, a whole range of different things. So we're going to just choose and keep this simple, say on sliders background. And everything else we're going to leave as it is. You can see at the bottom, we've got the option to disable or enable this on mobile devices. So we've got, again, another level of interactivity. So I'm going to click Save Changes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a page in now with that slider in it. And we're going to take a look at what it does. Okay, so here's our slider in the page, and you can see it looks exactly the same as any other slider. But once I start to scroll up, and it starts to go out of the viewpoint, you'll see that the slider will change from being solid color, and it'll start to get grayscale and fade out. So we've got a nice way of drawing attention to the other elements on the page without, dis without distracting with a very strong header image. So a really nice, simple effect that adds that extra level of professionalism to your sliders with Slider Revolution 5. Well, there we go, five power tips for Slider Revolution. Now, hope there's been some tips in there you found useful. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add. For any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. Until next time, take care.